Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to kind of just give y'all a toolkit and just a master list of different Python scripts that you can use for really common utility functions within data engineering. So this is things like how to extract data from website, automating form submissions, downloading images in bulk, counting the words in a text file, uh, automating email reminders, merging multiple sheets, just a lot of kind of utility templates that you can use for really common workflows, and then obviously templatize them, schedule them, whatever. But what I wanna do is just give you some really easy to use base templates that you can then customize and use for whatever use case they're applicable for. And I'll try to give you an idea of what those use cases are as well while I'm giving you the scripts. So without further ado, let's pop open a Python file and get started. So the first utility script I have for you is just a nice one to sort files into subdirectories. So here in this script, and one second, let me get the formatting right here. So in this script, what's happening is it's organizing files by, in a directory by sorting them into subdirectories based on their file extensions. So first, it identifies a file extension and then we'll move it to that uh, corresponding file. So this is really useful if you just want to have a script that iterates through everything you've downloaded, organize them all into subdomains, or organizing files in a specific project. And also, you know, if you have tags or things like that within your file names, it's much easier as well to <coughs> just have an automated script that searches for those tags and then assigns them to that folder based on that tag. And you can see if a file path doesn't already exist, then you also have an option to create a file path as well. Um, so let me just move this over here by like so. So you just OS path join, destination directory, and file name. Um, and kind of in tandem with that, you can also use this script here to remove any empty folders. So after maybe you've sorted them, you can use this Python script to search through and delete any empty folders within a specified directory and help you keep a clean and tidy folder structure where you don't have any kind of empty just nubs uh, tight or cluttering up your workspace there. Now, another thing you can use for renaming any files or you know managing them as well in a kind of programmatic way is to use this Python script that will rename multiple files in a directory simultaneously. So here it's taking the old name and the new name as inputs and then it's going to replace the old name with the new one for all files that match that specified criteria. Um, so you can say, hey, go through all these old file names, pass it in an array, um, and pass an array of new names, <clears throat> and then have all those files automatically renamed without you needing to intervene. So now getting out of file management, here we have a way that you can quickly and easily scrape an HTML page from a website. So in this Python script, we're utilizing the request library, which allows you to send and receive API requests, and then also manipulate them, and the beautiful soup library, which is just a web scraping library represented as BS4 here. And it fetches the content of the web page and then uses beautiful soup to parse the HTML and serve it as a response text. And you can customize that script to extract certain you know, specific pieces of data like headlines, product information, prices, um, by going through and, and isolating those values from that downloaded script. Now, another way you can use the request library is let's say you don't want to just download an entire web page, you can also just download and receive all images at once. So in this case, we're doing a setting a few different filters to, let's say, request from a JSON API that returns an array of images. This script will then make sure, hey, this API returns a JSON array of images, then it's going to go through every image URL in that response, query that image, return, or query that image URL, return that image, and then save it uh, and write it to a local directory um, under image response content. Um, and so in this case, it'll just be, you can see saving, building that URL with the content received from that uh, image uh, API request. So really easy way, if you know, let's say, hey, I want to download everything from this website, I want to download everything from a photo album, you can iterate through here um, and do that relatively easily. Now, let's say you want to analyze the text of some kind of document, you want to count the amount of words or just the overall amount of words. Um, here, the function does exactly that, this script reads a text file, counts the number of words it contains, and then you can use this to, you know, if you want to quickly analyze the counts of text documents, instead of just reading for every word, go through and say, hey, count however many times that the word uh, huge shows up, uh, or, you know, count the amount of times that airflow shows up, things like that. Um, so really quick and, and useful tool to incorporate if you're trying to search and parse through documents without you need, needing to do it yourself. Now, taking that a step further, what if you want to find and then replace text? 
Here, this Python script is going to first read the text at a given file path. And then once the file path is read in, it's going to open it and then replace every time that, let's say in this case, it uh, sees you know, any of these replacement text or you just wanna replace the whole thing at once or you can have conditions. Uh, here, you can bash replace certain phrases, connect errors in large text files, um, really do every kind of modifications you want at a really large scale. Um, so without needing to, again, manually do it uh, through a UI. Now, next, I have kind of a utility script that you might not think is super useful, but it actually, I've, I've found it comes in handy quite a lot. Uh, and that is just a Python script that just will join a random text or generate a random text of a specified length. Um, and I use this a lot when I'm trying to test scripts that are analyzing text or trying to parse things or really do any kind of ingestion. It's just a really good source of just kind of random content. Um, that you can then use just like a dummy randomizer for you know when just a regular number analyzer won't work but you want to actually analyze you know more text-based or you know more long form uh, you know non-structured data formats so really useful kind of utility script uh, to use for as part of your testing pipelines so moving out of the realm of text analysis and generation i want to now go into hey how can i send emails uh, personalized emails through python here's a great example this Python script lets you send personal emails to a list of recipients, where here you can iterate through a list of emails, pass, you know, passwords if you want to send uh, it through that or you know, from your email account. So you'll need a password there. Then you have your list of recipients, your subject, your body. Um, and here what it's going to use is use whatever SMTP server you have. Open this using the SMTP lib. So this is a lib library that allows you to send emails, secure SMTP messages, which is what emails are. Um, and then we also have this email builder, which is MIME text. Um, and this just a, makes it easier to build messages in that email format, which you can see here, where we have this MIME multi-part, where instead of a standard, just kind of data construct or array, we're actually building our message as a MIME multi-part message. Um, and so this here is giving a sender email, recipient email, any attachments, the text, subject, um, and then sending it all before quitting from the server. So initializing a server environment, then building the message and then sending it. Um, so really easy way if you need to, hey, go through every single person's email um, and, and you know, send them some piece of information. And if you wanna customize this to also add attachments, what you can do is include this from email, include encoder, and then within your payload. So here, opening, uh, let me add this. Part. Um, so here, what you do is replace this part with an additional function that's going to open a file path and then add that file as part of this Python script. Um, so here, if we put this all in here, we'll attach that part. Um, so easy way to extend that to also include file attachments and again, in an automated way. Um, so yeah, just super useful tool for bulk sending emails with whatever attachments you need. or programmatically sending them, you know, as a result of a message or if you need an alert for a pipeline, easy way to have a Python uh, function that does it. So now let's say you want to read or write from really any file path and make it turn into a data object in Python. Use pandas and use this read Excel or read PDF or read JSON, whatever type of file you have. Pandas probably has a way to read it in as a pandas data frame. And you can see both using the read Excel to create a data frame and then creating an Excel file from a data frame. So super useful function, super easy way to just, you know, create uh, easy visualization or create easy interpretation of data from external file sources and manipulate it using the best way to do that, which is Python. And so an example of how you can extend that and kind of make it useful is let's say you need to append a series of spreadsheets together, you need to append hundreds of sheets, um, but you need to do it in a controlled way. This is a Python script that very easily will just iterate through a list of sheet names read them all from a file location, append them all to a data frame, and then output a completely condensed and consolidated uh, file path that contains all those sheets just dependent to one another. So really useful for when you want to do things that you can't automate within Excel. You know, everyone loves their, their uh, Excel functions, but some things can't be done by Excel functions, and that's where it's useful to have tools like Python to come in here. Now, let's say you want to interact with a database, not just a you know, one-off Excel file. 
Here is a Python script that will allow you to do just that. So the SQLite package will allow you to connect to a SQLite database and execute whatever query you want within there. So you could write your query, pass it into this execute query function. Then first thing you're gonna do is execute this connected database, which will connect to the database path given wherever your data in SQLite, it's gonna be running locally. Most other databases have some more connectors where you'll pass in whatever your credentials are, secrets, uh, different ways of connecting, but they all kind of follow a very similar format of, hey, first you're connecting to the database and initializing a database session. Then you create a cursor, which kind of represents, you know, like your cursor, or your, your mouse within a database, where that can then go in and execute queries on your behalf within there. Um, and so in this example, just executing a fetch all, get our, a query that is then returned as a result. And so easy way to, you know, get data out of a database within into a Python script so that you can then do things with it in Python. Um, maybe turn into a data frame, do some analysis, do some machine learning, opportunities are endless. Now, the last one I wanna show you is one that I kind of think is super useful, uh, and that is automating posting to Twitter and Facebook. So Twitter, X, whatever. Um, but here, all you need to do is, you know, you create, use this Twython package, which is a Twitter Python interface, pass your API key, secret access token, and then you can actually just pass update status and there's commands for, you know, deleting status, liking things, um, and giving it just, you know, the message you want to actually serve as your tweet. Um, so easy way to not actually have to go into Twitter, but you can just have automated tweets come out. I'm sure a lot of influencers are doing something like this these days. And then similarly for Facebook, you have an, you know, graph API access token uh, that you can use to then put objects into the Facebook graph API and Facebook has their own first party maintained Python API as well. So a lot of functionality there that you can leverage. Um, and those are all the kind of helpful little Python scripts that I wanted to show with you today for a little Python utility. Hope you found these useful. Hope you found this to be a fun video. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.